We've all seen how the movies depicts the perfect life as a man and a woman get married, have kids, and live happily ever after. But as Americans, we have begged to differ. Today I'm going to discuss the drop in marriage rates with a comparison of what our country's marriage rates used to look like and what they look like today. I'll also be discussing the rise in single parent households, but how these rates affect our children. I am an oddball in the fact that I got married in my early 20s and then had children. But a lot of people have chosen to wait quite a bit longer nowadays. U.S. marriage rates at an all-time low was a headline on CBS News that caught my attention very quickly. Yet, back in 1960, 72% of U.S. adults 18 and older were married. Now, less than half of our country's adults are married. The Pew Research Center has suggested if we continue on this downward trend, within a few years, less than half American adults will be hitched. Their words, not mine. There has even been a decline in the age of first marriage. Only 20% of adults between the ages of 18 and 29 are actually married. But back in 1960, that number was 59%. Over the past 50 years, the age of first marriage has risen by around six years for both men and women. That's what this chart depicts. As you can see, these lines go up. We go from between 20 and 23 all the way up to almost 30. This blue line reflects our male's ages, and this pink line reflects our female's ages. And this goes all the way from 1960 to show us what we looked like in 2010. Crazy. According to a Pew Research survey, in 2010, nearly 4 in 10 Americans say marriage is becoming just obsolete. Yet 61% of those people who have never been married would like to get married someday. These rates have dropped due to the fact that there are other living arrangements, such as cohabitation, single-person households, and single parenthood. But that last reason really does lead to my next point. It seems as though people are more willing to share and swap DNA than give away someone's last name. There are about 14 million single parents in the U.S. today, according to the Single Parent Center website. These parents are responsible for raising the 21.6 million of our nation's children. Most single parents are mothers. Go figure. 83.1% of single custodial parents are mothers, whereas only 16.9% are custodial fathers. So let me break all of this down for you. 45% of single mothers and 58% of single fathers are either separated or divorced. 34% of single mothers are not or never have been married, whereas 20% of single fathers are currently married or have remarried. 1.7% of single mothers and fewer than 1% of single fathers are widowed. 21% of single fathers have never been married. 80% of single mothers are employed, although only 50% of them work full time. But 90% of single fathers are employed, and 72% of them work full time. Here's the kicker though 27% of single mothers live in poverty with their children. So, how do all of these numbers affect our children, you ask? I'll tell you. The people affected the most by single parent households are the children. The Single Parent Success Foundation states that 75% of children and adolescents in chemical dependency hospitals are from single parent households. More than half of all youths incarcerated for criminal acts lived in one-parent families as a child. 63% of suicides are people who grew up in single-parent families, and 75% of teenage pregnancies are adolescents from single-parent families. The apple doesn't fall too far from the tree when it comes to teenage pregnancies. I think that's evidence enough to show single parent households aren't always the best option for our children. My goal today was, this, was to discuss the drop in marriage rates with a, with a comparison of what our country's marriage rates used to look like and what they look like today, the rise in single parent households, 
and how these rates affect our children.